Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Our show is a production of the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation and our affiliated political committee, a federal 501c4, the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp. We have an exciting show for you tonight. Uh, Tim Pate is here, our uh, Doc Severinsen of Cannabis. How are you doing? I'm ready to toot my horn. How are you doing, Paul? All right, we're doing pretty well. <laughs> we uh, also will have some film clips. We have some news, a lot of exciting stories tonight. And uh, we'll be taking your viewer phone calls in just a few minutes. So stay tuned as we bring on our infamous Dancing Cannabis Leaves. <laughs> Welcome to Hip News. Uh, our first story tonight is from Olympia, Washington. The House and Senate lawmakers approved legislation last week to expand Washington State's nearly 12-year-old medical marijuana law. As approved, Senate Bill 5798 will allow additional health care professionals, including naturopaths, physicians' assistants, osteopathic physicians' assistants, and advanced registered nurse practitioners to legally recommend marijuana therapy to their patients. Under the present law, only licensed physicians may legally recommend medicinal cannabis. Washington lawmakers are the first legislators to codify these expanded recommended rights into state law. The measure now goes before Democratic Governor Christine Gregoire for final approval. Gregoire is believed to be supportive of this measure. Next story tonight is from New Hampshire. The New Hampshire House of Representatives has passed a marijuana decriminalization measure. From Concord, New Hampshire. New Hampshire House lawmakers last week voted 214 to 137 in favor of legislation to decriminalize minor marijuana possession offenses. New Hampshire House Bill 1653 would reduce criminal penalties on up to one quarter ounce of cannabis from a misdemeanor punishable by up to one year in jail and a $2,000 fine to a fine only offense or an infraction, like a traffic ticket, like we have in Oregon. The measure now goes to the Senate for further action. If enacted by the Senate, the measure will be before Democratic Governor John Lynch, who's threatened to veto the proposal. Lynch said, quote, marijuana is a controlled drug that remains illegal under federal law. We should not make the jobs of parents or law enforcement harder by sending a false message that some marijuana use is acceptable, end quote. To date, 13 states have decriminalized the personal use and possession of marijuana by adults. According to a 2009 University of Washington study, quote, there is no evidence that decriminalization of marijuana by certain states caused an increase in marijuana use or related problems, end quote. More good news from Hawaii. A marijuana law reform bill has passed the Hawaiian Senate and moves forward to the House. Hawaiian Senate lawmakers in Honolulu recently passed a series of measures seeking to amend the state's marijuana laws. Senate Bill 2450 seeks to reduce minor marijuana possession penalties from a criminal misdemeanor currently punishable by up to 30 days in jail and a $1,000 fine to a civil infraction punishable by only a fine. Normal presented written testimony in support of this measure, which could reallocate over $6 million in criminal justice costs. Senate lawmakers passed the bill unopposed on March 2nd, and the measure now awaits for action from members of the House Judiciary Committee. Hawaiian Senate Bill 2213 would amend Hawaii's nearly 10-year-old medical marijuana law by allowing for establishment of licensed compassion centers to engage in the regulated and controlled production and distribution of cannabis for state-authorized patients. Uh, the state of Rhode Island has already approved those and are currently starting a six-month process of uh, reviewing uh, the applicants, and they'll select three 
uh, state licensed Rhode Island nonprofits to start selling cannabis. This proposal, which passed the Senate uh, for medical marijuana in Hawaii by a 20 to 1 vote, on March 11, House lawmakers on the Health Committee and Public Safety Committee overwhelmingly passed the measure and now awaits action from the Hawaiian House Judiciary Committee. Another bill, Hawaiian Senate Bill 2141, seeks to increase the quantities of medical marijuana that patients can legally possess at any given time. Currently, they're allowed to possess seven plants and three ounces. Under this new bill, they'd be allowed to possess ten plants and five ounces. Senators voted 24 to 1 in favor of this measure, which now, again, like the others, goes the House Committees on Health, Public Safety, and Judiciary. Hawaiian Republican Governor Laura Lingle has yet to publicly comment on the measures, but has vetoed past efforts to reform the state's marijuana laws. Our last story tonight uh, is uh, by the Associated Press. Patients, growers, and clinics in some of the 14 states that allow marijuana are increasingly falling victim to robberies, home invasions, shootings, and even murder at the hand of cannabis thieves. There have been dozens of cases in recent months alone. The issue received more attention this week after a prominent medical marijuana activist in Seattle nearly killed a robber in a shootout. The eighth time thieves had targeted his cannabis growing operation. Critics say the heists and holdups prove that marijuana and crime are inseparable, though we advocates contend that further legalization is the answer. News of the crimes related to medical marijuana comes at an awkward time for California and Washington advocates who are pushing ballot measures to allow all adults, uh, not just to ser the seriously ill, to possess cannabis, as we are here in Oregon with our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition. According to Scott Kirkland, the police chief in El Cerrito, California, and a vocal critic of his state uh, voter-approved medical marijuana law, he said, quote, whenever you're dealing with drugs and money, there's going to be crime. If people think otherwise, they're very naive, end quote. Uh, according to Kirkland, he went on and said, quote, people think if we decriminalize it, Mexican cartels and Asian gangs are going to walk away. That's not the world I live in, Kirkland said. Activists and law enforcement officials say it's difficult to get an accurate picture of crimes leaked to medical marijuana because many drug users don't report the crimes to the police for fear of arousing unwanted attention from authorities. But uh, a anti-cannabis group, the California Police Chiefs Association, used press clippings to compile 52 marijuana-related crimes, including seven homicides from April 2008 to March 2009. There's also a plenty of anecdotal evidence. A man in Washington State last week was beaten to death with what is believed to be a crowbar after confronting an intruder on the rural property where he was growing cannabis to treat back problems. The police questioned him for several hours and told him to put a bandage on his head and left him there. He later died in a hospital, and uh, they're now investigating a uh, murder. Medical marijuana activist Steve Sarich exchanged gunfire with intruders in his Seattle home this past Monday, shooting and critically injuring one of them while taking uh, several shotgun pellets in his uh, uh, cheek and arm. In California, a boy was shot to death trying to steal a cancer patient's cannabis plants from his home garden. A respected magazine editor was killed in 2007 by robbers who targeted his Northern California home for marijuana and money after hearing that his teenage son was growing cannabis with the doctor's approval. Robbers killed a security guard at a Los Angeles medical marijuana dispensary in 2008. You know, as soon as we tax and regulate marijuana, we'll take it out of the hands of the uh, cartels and others who control the market today and we will tax and regulate it. We don't see uh, Al Capone shooting up people to buy liquor anymore and when marijuana is taxed and regulated these sorts of crimes will become a, a non-existent. Anyway, that's a brief editorial with our hip news tonight. How are you doing Tim? I am good. That's quite some, that's a lot of stories there. A lot of news. Yeah. A lot, a of, lot of things of are going on all over. So, you know, with that in mind, I figured I'd, I'd break out this song again. All right. Let's all be farmers. And save the trees. One acre of hemp. Save a forest, please. Let's all be farmers. Get filthy rich 
Instead, they're wrecking the planet on its beginning to this on its own deformers. Ralph, you must stop. This is the new, the old, the original. All billion dollar crop on its own deformers. And save the seas Oil without crude Yeah, I hear hip oil is clean Oil that's all the farmers An index on the rain I can grow my own oil, thank you And without the pain That's all the farmers Now that you know, well, who am I to tell you? Oh, what you should go, and it's all the farmers. It's all the farmers. It's all the farmers. And as much Oh, the last tree falls Won't look like he got them Oh, the hell them all It's all before me It's all before me Let's all be farmers. Let's all be farmers. Let's all be farmers. Mr. Tim Pate. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Love that song. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome back, and we are going to be taking your calls and comments. Just give us a call if you're watching Friday, March 19th, 2010. You're watching show 527, I believe, and uh, counting. So uh, I just got in off a plane from snowy Denver this morning. Happy to be in spring-like Oregon again. But uh, I guess we do have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hello, hi. Um, I just have a uh, gardening question. Um, okay. Sativas, you know, grow bigger and faster than um, indicas, but their flowering cycle is much slower. And I was wondering if anybody there has had any experience with um, young sativa plants, you know, the early starting, starting the flowering cycle being like starting really late before it shows any male or female flowers. Like um, usually you can, that happens within eight weeks, but... I was wondering if anybody just seen that happen like as late as like 12 weeks or even after the plant. I have day. seen, I had one indica plant, a Thai plant, back in the mid-80s that I let flower for six months and it never finished. It just yeah. kept, start, you know, it kept seeming like, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start here any time now. But it kept making these light little first stage flowers and never filled up with any colas or anything. And so, uh, and I have uh, one of my favorite strains uh, that I grow, Lemon Pledge, which won uh, the Oregon Medical Cannabis Awards and other things. It uh, has a lot of sativa in it, and it's a little bit harder to root, and it uh, takes a little bit longer to flower, but it uh, has several unique properties that uh, uh, makes it an award-winning strain. So, so, so there, so you, it seems like the average is always going to be around eight weeks for most everything, but I've, I've experienced the same thing Paul has said. Uh, I've, I've had things go full full and ready at six weeks and still be wanting at 12 weeks and so you know yeah. it's, it's kind of like oh, and, which and you way can you take go? the same strain and the same flowers and they might be technically ready in six or, or seven weeks but then you can let them continue to flower and their cannabinoid profile changes and medicinal properties change as they continue to mature and get so, into the 10th or 12th or 14th week the the crystals change from being 
clear to amber to uh, red, and, purple, black, and blue. And they, they can be like two feet tall or even more before they even show any flowers of any kind? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, they can be a lot taller than that. A lot taller than that. I have plants right now that are about eight feet tall that aren't showing any signs of flowering, but I'm not trying to flower them. I'm just getting them ready to go outdoors. Yeah, that's all that has to do with is, yeah. is the light cycle you're you're creating for that plant. Yeah. It, that 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 makes it really hard to sex the plant. So like if you have Yeah, um, if you're growing from seed, that is a problem. Yeah. You can take cuttings and then sex the cuttings or sex the plant, then you'll know for certain. Uh but it, you know, if you want to save the strain, you better take cuttings. I always tell medical marijuana patients that first you have to learn how to make cuttings and then you can learn how to make bud because without learning the art of making cuttings you can't continually grow a sensimia crop. Yeah. If you have a small grow space. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well that, especially with a small space you want to grow probably from cuttings rather than seedlings if you can't because you'll know you, you've got uh, you always a known a quantity. Yeah. They hate yeah. it when I go in into a a rookie grower's garden, and they think they have nice buds, and they have all male plants. That's disappointing. Yeah. Ow. But well, that would be a real bummer, wouldn't it? It is a bummer. It's, it's no bummer. fun telling people no, no, that. No. Oh, yeah. Sorry, dudes. Well, but I anyway. appreciate the uh, information. You're welcome. Thanks you're a welcome. lot. I appreciate the show. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Hey, you too. If you're out there and you have a question or call for us, call us that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4448. How are you, Tim? I'm good. How about yourself? You had had some traveling this week, just didn't you? Just trip off to Denver for a couple of days. Had yeah. a little bit of business there. It was snow in there That's this morning. I got about five inches of snow on the, the car overnight. But, uh, boy, flying in this today, there was a beautiful view oh. to the north. It, the, there's no limit on the haze. It's pretty no day in the northwest. It went uh, all the way to the curvature of the earth. I think I could see it to Canada, well past Mount Rainier. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in the Northwest. It definitely is. It Good is. day to fly. Spring is sprung. Good day to fly out of Denver. Yeah. Anyway, now, if you, uh, you we've, have we had made any progress on the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act this week? What's what's going on with that? The it's still petition in the hands. campaign. We're waiting for a challenge to the ballot title that was certified by the Attorney General and the Secretary of State. Okay. A fellow by the name of Brad Bonneau mm -hmm. of Beaverton had filed a challenge okay. to the wording and it basically slows down the petition drive. But our company that is ha handling the petition campaign, Democracy Resources, mm -hmm. and their president, Ted Blazak, uh, they uh, are confident that it's not going to really impact the petition campaign. In other they words, can put this on the ballot in, yeah. in 60 days regardless. So they've done that many times in the past. And there's a lot more excitement about this petition than many of the others that they've qualified before. So uh, the, the delay right now, it's in the, the hands of the uh, Supreme, Court. Supreme Court. They go by their own. You know, it could come out as early as next week or it could be the middle of April or it could be, uh, you know, the end of April. Okay. It all depends on you know, what the various Supreme Court members say and think of uh, the challenge. Uh, if they feel like yeah. it's a challenge is worthy, then they, they think go about forward or, or they debate. Okay. They'll debate. We have another caller, though. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank Good you evening. for the program, and uh, thank you, Portland Community Media, for the uh, facilities, and uh, thank We're you, very volunteers. Grateful for that. Um, my question is related to a, a call you took last week. Mm -hmm. uh, a grower, uh, a caller was... Uh, asking about uh, the number of plants, and I, I guess it was uh, related to uh, wanting maybe to have more than, you know, more than just a few people in a house growing. And my question arose when I began to think about the hemp for food products, and uh, you mentioned it during the answer portion of the call, um, Paul, you mentioned that... Uh, once you get to a certain limit of plants, a certain number, I believe it was 100 or something like that, or there was a number of plants that you get to, and then you start dealing with federal issues. Well, you know, there, there are federal laws against cultivating marijuana. Uh -huh. And as long as you have a state license and are following state law, then you, by and large, shouldn't uh, uh, have any problems with the federal government. The attorney general said that they weren't going to arrest people because of federal law as long as they were in compliance with their state medical marijuana law about seven or eight months ago. And but the, so there's, there's several enhancements in cultivating cannabis in terms of the federal law. Uh -huh. If you grow less than six plants, 
there's one level if there and and the number of times you've been convicted of the, a crime also have an impact on what those penalties are if you grow over 24 plants if you grow over 49 plants you grow over 99 plants or you grow over 999 plants at each one of those increases there is a corresponding increase in federal penalties for cultivating marijuana if you grow over 99 plants for a first-time offender that could be up to five years in federal prison and uh, if you're a multiple-time offender the the penalty is enhanced so yeah uh, if you know and, and what matters is if you get pulled into federal court you right. know, and by and large as long as you're complying with the medical marijuana law you shouldn't have to worry about that here in Oregon especially yeah. where we get state permits my, it'd my, be more problematic in other states where you wouldn't get a state permit yeah my question was more uh, along the lines of uh, hemp for food and uh, the products that you have uh, on your table, you had more products last yeah, week. Yeah, more last week. We, I just had our wonderful camera person, Sylvia, and uh, activist extraordinaire bring up these granola hemp bars yeah. just uh, seconds before the show started. And during last week's program, uh, one of the products, or one or more, I, I can't remember how many, uh, was actually processed here uh, in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but or distributed the, in Oregon. It's actually processed. We were talking about Living Foods uh -huh. Hemp Milk last week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have a brand name now, Tempt. They just added that yeah. brand name to and, their uh, hemp milk and hemp ice cream uh, uh, products. Yeah. And so uh, those looking, are processed in B.C., but distributed by Living oh, I see. Uh, Foods here in, I think it's Living Harvest, Living yeah. Harvest here in uh Portland. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying the uh, the, the ice cream, but uh, like the, the reason that I was uh, curious is if a person was to begin growing for the purpose of processing hemp for food, mm -hmm. um, I would imagine it would take more than just six plants right. or 12 or whatever. Yeah. You would have to yeah. have pretty much a field yeah, full. Acreage. Um, and currently, it's not legal to grow hemp for food and seed in the United States. Right. Though several states, including Oregon last year, have passed hemp food legislation. Uh, the federal government is holding that up. The agency in charge of it is the Drug Enforcement Administration, and they continually blocked any move to uh, lessen the penalties or anything to do with cannabis or hemp. So if a person wanted to grow hemp for food, would we pressure our state legislature to pressure the federal government, or would we uh, maybe petition the federal government for a specific you, grow you license would, the, for that? You know, the state has already passed a law. Yeah. Representative Floyd Przansky, a prosecutor from Lane County and a board member of the, uh, uh, Oregon, yeah, the Oregon Country Fair. He uh, has been pushing a hemp bill for 15 years and finally got it through, and the governor signed it into law last year. However, it can't go into effect until the federal government changes its law. But in Canada and the European Union, they have legalized industrial hemp, and so we're able to import uh, food products from Canada. And it's a lot cheaper than trying to set it up and grow it here. They already are doing it on a mass basis. Now, they're limited to low THC plants and what they do with low THC plants is they limit the site of flowers on the plant and that limits the THC. It also limits the amount of seed, oil and protein that are produced by those plants. Right. But you still that? you can get it, uh, one of the major distributors of hemp food and hemp uh, oil is Hemp Oil Canada and you can go to their website hempoilcan.com and uh, uh, they have the lowest uh, bulk prices on hemp. Until we legalize and regulate marijuana, though, I really believe that uh, hemp won't reach its full potential. There's a study out of Notre Dame University that shows that feral hemp fields uh, are wild hemp that grows here in the United States that law enforcement agents can't wipe out after decades of trying, that that wild hemp produces 20 times more seed oil and protein than these low hemp uh, low THC hemp strains that are permitted in the European Union and Canada. So, so I really believe until the artificial uh, 
burdens that are placed on the can on industrial hemp production are removed and cannabis is taxed and regulated that it's going to hemp can't reach its full potential and won't be fully utilized to its full effect until what? we tax and regulate marijuana yeah. and to that end we have a petition <laughs> the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act that would do that one there. final question sure um, would it be something as simple as uh, ask uh, uh, getting the federal government to reschedule hemp or would it be something more, much more complicated than that? And all this, no, this no, answer. it would be as simple as getting a bill through the House and Congress and signed by the president into law that would allow industrial hemp. Uh, when I say as simple as that, I say at the same time, you know, look at health care reform. Right. And look at, I mean, you know, sometimes when the consensus is there, bills can sail through the House with unanimous approval. Other times uh, there are political battles over those that are people are drawn, you know, on party lines just as the current health care debate Would seems the first to be. step be to reschedule it off of the drug uh, thing and then go to doesn't the even require line? that. It just says that uh, you know in the in the European Union and Canada they cultivate hemp even though they still have marijuana prohibition in oh, place. Okay. So it doesn't mean that it has to be removed from criminal prohibition. But as long as there is a criminal prohibition the artificial burdens of cultivating something tightly regulated are going to make hemp products much more expensive than they should be and limit the productivity of the products we can uh, grow today. Just as in the EU and Canada, they grow fiber hemp that's half as productive as THC with 3%, which is still pretty low THC. The feral hemp in the United States is 3 to 5% THC, and they're limited to one half of 1% THC. So by breeding out those flowers, they've lowered the fiber production by 50% and lowered the uh, hip seed oil and protein production by 95%. I right, thank you all for taking the time to answer my tedious questions. It's and right. Good uh, questions. I uh, enjoy the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we have a film clip we're going to roll right now, and we will be back in just a moment to discuss it and take more viewer phone calls and have a little show and tell with our products here. Uh, the Million Marijuana March took place in Portland, Oregon last May 2009, and Oregon Normal is the sponsor. That will have another one here on the first Saturday yes, of May. The Million Marijuana March starts at Pioneer Square at high noon 
I'm not sure of the exact day right now. I think it's the uh, first Saturday in May. Definitely the first Saturday yeah. in May. Uh, we have a call. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi. Am I the first caller? You are. Well, welcome. Yes. Well, uh, you know what? My name is Betty. Hi, Betty. And, hi. And I wanted to ask a question here. You've reached the right place then. Yeah. Um, now, I want to find out something that uh, I, mean, uh, I got a car holder. But uh, my uh, my uh, car won't end until June. Now, uh, could I uh, uh, could grow plants, uh, 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 marijuana plants, and then just use it for myself? Or could I? Yeah, do but that you're or? gonna. You can definitely do that, and you can do it right up to when your card expires. And if you you can go in and renew your card any time within. 90 days before it expires so you're entering the period where you could renew it I would recommend you go and renew it sometime in May and if it's going to expire in June and that way you can continue to grow throughout the year now if you had somebody else providing for you and they were on your card you need to go ahead and make the change you need to go to the state and you need to make that change so that you have got uh, you've got all that information accurate with the state because if 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 the cops come in if, you know for instance and, and check your residence where you're providing for yourself where you may not have been before and it's not registered for that you get yourself in trouble you don't want to do that so make sure you change that registration as well. Yeah, well, couldn't I just wait until June and then change everything? Yeah, you, you can. can wait till June. Just don't wait past your card's expiration date. But if your circumstances change, you need to make that change right away. Yeah, if you moved or if someone like your caregiver or grower changed, then you should notify them within 30 days or less. Yes. Yeah, well, how much, uh, do you know how much I, I paid last time $140? It costs nothing to make any changes. That's free. Yeah. It's a free form. You just fill out the form and hand it to them. There's no cost involved with that at all. Yeah, if you need to make changes prior to your renewal. Mm -hmm. If your renewal time, you know, there's a state fee that you have to pay. Sounds like yours might have been $20. Is that accurate? And then, uh, you know, if you aren't on uh, food stamps or Medicaid or SSI, uh, SSI uh, then it's a $100 annual fee. Well, you see, I'm, under, I'm on a fixed income. I do get SSI and Social Security and plus. I get Medicaid and then... Yeah, plus, so you're definitely qualified uh, for the lower fees. Card. You do, you qualify. So how much... Uh, all Should be $20 gonna... with the state and uh, depending upon where you go to get your your uh, uh, license renewed, whichever doctor you use, whether you use a clinic or you use your own doctor, they, those fees can vary. Um, well, um, uh, should I go ahead and use one of you guys' doctors? Or? Well, you're certainly welcome to. I mean, you know, if you can't get your own doctor to do it through your, your Medicaid, then, uh, you know, uh, our doctors would be happy to help. Well, you see, I don't think my regular doctor would uh, uh, help it. me do all that. I thought maybe I would get one of your doctors to help me do all that. And besides that, i got to get somebody to help me uh, to fill out those papers and everything. Sure. Well, we're happy to do that. And if you need that sort of assistance, you know, just call our office to make an appointment. We have doctors seeing patients there uh, six days a week. Uh, uh, today we had two doctors there working, one from Washington, one from Oregon, just here in the Portland office alone, in addition to working in several other cities as well. Yeah, well, you see, I was, I was thinking about uh, getting some plants and growing myself and have somebody teach me how to cut it down and everything. Yeah, and yeah. Grow it there are everything. lots of different places that have classes. We have taught classes ourselves in the past, and we're gearing up to do the same at a new office at 26th and Division in Portland. And uh, there are other places that have classes as well that can help you learn those uh, processes. Yeah, well, um, uh, where can I get the uh, addresses and listings for all that? You know, just give us a call. Here in Portland, you can leave a message at 503-235-4606. 
That's 503-235-4606. If you're outside of the Portland area, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. We're based here in Portland and have been working here since, well, THCF started in 1999 and CRRH started in uh, 1990. So uh, the organizations have been here in Portland for quite a while. But now we have offices in nine different states and see patients in over 40 cities all around the United States, everywhere from Marquette, Michigan to Kapa'a, Hawaii. Yeah, well, I do have another question if I can. Sure. Now, like, say, if I grow it and cut it down and use it for myself, now, like, say, I, I got a friend and she has a... Uh, License too. Now, could I give some of my uh, plants uh, that I get? Yeah, it's it's do? legal for patients to exchange amongst themselves without consideration, and they can also uh, help each other with expenses, excluding their time. They can't charge each other for their time, but they can, you know, help each other with expenses, or they can give it away without, you know, any sort of consideration. That's what I do with 100% of my crop. I give away 100% without consideration. And it's good yeah. karma. It is. It's yeah, a whole well, new paradigm. Yeah, I was just more or less wanting to find out all this because um, now my caregiver, the one I get to my, uh, get my stash from, mm -hmm. now, he, he, now he's not doing, uh, filling up for his potential now. I call him and I ask him for some, and he tells me I had to wait but three, four days. And I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's right or not. Well, I would definitely recommend that if it takes him three or four days to get back in touch with you, you should call him at least ten or, or nine or ten days before you need him. And that way, if he takes two or three days, you still haven't run out yet. So and it, you know it's it's it makes it difficult but one of the things that we'd like to try to do in this state is is have some of those arrangements and agreements made in advance you know between you and your and your, your yeah. caregiver Before so that you, you name know someone you, you know should. what they want they know yeah. what you want you know what they need they know what you need uh, and there's a timing issue you know how much medicine you need so that they can grow an appropriate amount to keep you in medicine it's a it's a it's a balance that a lot of growers and patients are still learning how to deal with that with each other. I've noticed that is probably one of the biggest complainable problems in the system. Now, like say you guys had that meetings or whatever uh, at some of these places. Now, like say if I still have a car owner, could I go to like some of those meetings? Or stuff? Yeah, you yes. certainly can. You can go to the Oregon Normal meeting. Uh, you have to be a member of Oregon Normal. There are other organizations out there that, uh, you know, have their own uh, uh, organizational rules. You know, most of them want you to become members of a private club, and that gains special uh, protections when it comes to uh, privacy and uh, other things. So, uh, yeah, you could go to the Oregon Normal meeting that happens twice a month on the second and fourth Saturday of each month. Uh, there's the information there on your screen about that at 700 Northeast Deacom Street or any of the others out there. They're all they're springing up all over the place every day. Yeah, well, I want I, I, when I go and apply for my uh, uh, do I have to reschedule for that to go in and get my re license? Do I have to get my uh, medical papers? No, you don't have to do any of that again. Once you've uh, turned those in, then you don't have to get them every year or anything like that. So how do I go about doing that, or, or should I call them? And Just call the doctor you saw before, or call that number that we gave out a moment ago. Again, it's 503-235-4606. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I've been hearing that uh, I'm supposed to get my medical papers and, do, and all that. They just sent back to them. So I don't yeah, I don't think you do have to that. do that anymore. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Uh, I, I just uh, like to say if I choose to, I just pay a hundred and forty dollars then. Uh, you know the state's twenty dollars. I know the low income fee uh, is. Uh, you know, one thing I got to say first of all, 
is that our program is a cable access television production. And because of that, we cannot uh, go into economic details because that could cause problems with our, uh, you know, this is supposed to be a non-commercial forum. And so we can't really say this is this and this is that and you can buy this for that. But we try to educate people with products like this that change week to week and everything. So uh, I guarantee it won't be any more than that and could be less. Okay, well, I, well, I said I would check in and get some listings on the addresses and stuff like that in order to come to you guys' meetings and everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, at 700 Northeast Deacom Street is that Oregon Normal Meeting. And uh, there's the address there in, in micro print on your screen, 700 Northeast Deacom. It's on the fourth, second and fourth Saturday of each month. Uh, so that's not tomorrow, but next week in, in, in real time as we're uh, doing this live show. I want to thank you for all your questions, though. I think they've been informative. Yeah. And, uh, did we get most things covered there, man? Yes, I, you did, but thank you, and you you've been a big help. Thank You're you. Welcome. You have a good evening. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Speaking of which, we have a few procs. Let maybe camera one can roll in here, Dana, and just roll on in even closer. What the heck? That'll. We have these nifty hemp granola bars, the Hemp Plus granola bars made by Nature's Path. And as I said, activist extraordinary Sylvia brought these in, and we're going to actually be able to eat them right here on the show. Hit plus Just raisins. Like when, yeah, they, they here's say they're plus rum, raisins. Right. Here's yeah. a nifty little uh, thing here, and it's, yeah. it's a very continue breaking ground. Good. Last week it was a vanilla Healthy. ice cream, and so this other product we have, I'll bring mm. in, is a new bottle from Eli Lilly, a uh, cannabis tincture. Oh, that's great. Cannabis tincture. It says poison extract up there at the top. Uh, I want to show this bottle, the back of this bottle. This bottle just arrived today. And uh, it says this is from a pharmacist in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pharmacist in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he said this is on hand on October 1st, 1937. It's written right here on the bottle. Now, marijuana prohibition went into effect on October 2nd. 1937. The new Federal Cannabis Stamp Act law went into effect on October 2nd. So this pharmacist noted that this was on hand the day before cannabis prohibition went into effect. And just this week I was in Denver and went by the site of the Lexington Hotel in Denver. The Lexington Hotel is where the very first marijuana arrest happened here in the United States. It uh, was a fellow by the name of Stephen Caldwell. He was arrested in uh, Denver for selling two marijuana cigarettes to another gentleman. And he went to court for that, and he received the maximum penalty at that time, six years of hard labor in the federal prison at Leavenworth. And the man he sold his two joints to did two, a year and a half. And the judge told him that he wanted him to serve every single day, and in fact, both of them served every single day of their sentence. Six years for Mr. Caldwell, a year and a half for the gentleman who bought the two joints. And Caldwell died a, just a year after he got out of prison. And he was an unemployed man in the Denver area. And uh, that was just a little bit of history. Story of the first arrest. How did you like that uh, hip granola bar? I like it. Like You know, we both have noticed over the years that the food continues to get better it's and better. It's getting better and better. And, Not that uh, it was ever this, bad. It, it, it's similar to a Rice Krispie treat, it, it, but it's got rolled oats in it, and, and obviously it's got raisins, and it's lightweight, it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's nice. It's nice. It's got a good flavor to it. I All can right. see where it works. It works for me. It's really good. Mm. 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 We have another caller. I'm Hello, just caller. Sit here and say, mm -hmm. You're on the show. Hey, good evening. How are you guys doing tonight? Mm -hmm. Very well. Yeah, you guys are making those snacks look really good. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I had a question. Um, I'm a. I have a card. I'm a card. I have a card. I'm a card. A medical holder. marijuana permit. That's correct. Um, and I was. I was going to attempt to do my first grow, and mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it really um, concealed and out of the way because of um, right. family members and people coming to visit. Right. And I, through my research on the Internet, there was a particular product, and um, it's called the uh, Mini Cool Cab. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, and if so, um, if you were, um, would you be able to 
Is that something that would be decent? What's that product called? It's called the Mini Cool Cab. Is it just a cabinet? Or is it a, is a cloth cabinet, it's, wood cabinet? What's it like? It's like a um, like a like a little small metal work shed cabinet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's about uh, uh, forty two inches in height, thirty six inches in width, mm-hmm. and twenty inches in depth. So you're thinking about growing your medical marijuana crop in there? That's correct. You'd get something out of that. It wouldn't be a huge amount. I've been to some stores lately where they sell these ten by ten or ten by twenty little tents that you can pitch up and they're all reflective inside and they're they work real well and it's a lot cheaper than building room i mean you can get them anywhere from two to five hundred dollars but uh then you've got to have space to put up a 10 by 10 or 10 by 20 tent like that somewhere inside so that's uh, uh one drawback but it's cheaper than building walls and things so uh you know it all depends on what your needs are if you, you think go. that you got to figure what the input is there as well your garden's limited by the amount of lumens and nutrients that are grow- can grow there and the amount of space it can grow in. And it needs fresh air as well. So as long as that cabinet uh, can provide those, uh, you'd want to know a little bit more information about what it should produce. Uh, but if you had plants that you could put in fresh every two months, you could have a harvest every two months. But you'd have something separate to keep your clones or cuttings going. Did okay, that help? Which- which, yes, it does, which I would have something um, extra for that. Um, yeah. I really appreciate um, you asking the question, and I really enjoy the show and all the information that you provide for all of us. Thanks, and good luck with your grow, man. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks hey, for that question. You guys have a good show. I remember the first Thanks. time I got to grow. It was just it was very exciting, very nervous. You know, I was wanting to make sure I did everything right, and, you know, I over-pampered, over-babied, and, you know, I was over-nervous when the police came and knocked on my door and all that kind of stuff, but... I made it through that whole year, and you will too. I had my, you know, get out of jail card free, which is why we did this here in this state. And so you're doing the right thing for you, medicine-wise, and, uh, you know, keep it up. Good luck. And if you need help, uh, don't be afraid to ask. There's plenty of people in our community who are always willing to help now. You know, I was just reading the side of this bottle. It's kind of interesting. It says that each cc of this tincture is the equal representative one gram of the dried flowering tops of the foliate cannabis plant and it's useful for spasmodic analgesic sedative and narcotic purposes used in pain hysteria and migraines so that's what they were saying back in the early mid 30s when that bottle was produced we have another caller hello caller you're on our show hey how's it going very well how are you good good uh, I'm new to Oregon, just moved down here in November. I uh, just wanted to make a comment on how a uh, misdemeanor under 40 gram marijuana possession has kept me from getting a job down here. It's uh, really ridiculous. In fact, when before I moved to Seattle, I had a, a job at a major uh, rental car place for washing cars, and when they found out that I had this uh, uh, misdemeanor possession, uh, I couldn't even get a job. And also down here, I was... Uh, uh, denied by a fast food uh, place for 8.40 an hour, and it's been pretty frustrating. Uh, Boy, that's to, uh, really frustrating. Yeah, that's that's a travesty. I mean, you know, there really are studies that show that cannabis users are more productive and have less sick time off than people who don't use cannabis at all. And so, you know, these folks are, are misinformed. I would say just keep beating the pavement, man. You know, uh, uh, see how many applications you can put out in a day. And numbers will eventually catch up, you know. Not I, one time I went in when I was 17 to a local restaurant. Well, you know, we're talking the 70s. It was a different day and age back then. But uh, the uh, the owner of the or the manager of the restaurant when I went in said, you know, do you smoke marijuana? And I said yes. I answered the question honestly. And he hired me because I answered it honestly. He said if I said no, he wasn't going to do it because he thought I would be lying. So, Well, I quit drinking 20 years ago, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an honest person, and I haven't been unemployed since 1977, and I, I can't believe, especially in Oregon here, I was told by a re, uh, an employment recruiter when you put the word uh, marijuana possession, they immediately think it's a felony. And, you know, well, when- yeah, you shouldn't even say that you have a misdemeanor. Misdemeanors don't really count in the world of, criminal convictions you know it's uh really felonies that they're talking about 
So yeah, if I were we, you, I, I just wouldn't disclose that. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably better off on doing that. I, I actually have a job lined up mm -hmm. as a security guard. Now, I can buy a handgun. I have done that so, since yeah, I've lived here in Oregon. Yeah, won't stop you from, you know, exercising your right to, Second Amendment right to freedom to bear arms. Right, and I can actually get a concealed weapons permit, but I can't get the certification from the state. And right now I'm in the process of having that uh, uh, Mr. Meaner uh, conviction Expunged vacated is up the proper in Tacoma, word, Washington. Yeah. yeah, it costs money, but it's always a good thing, if you can, to get those kind of things expunged from your record. Yes, well, I just wanted to call up. I uh, just was rolling through the, the TV guide and saw you guys, and uh, I have to admit you've had a couple of real long-winded uh, callers and I won't be one of them but I just wanted to Don't comment worry. how much of a pain and you know what it is to uh, have something so minor on your record and people you know discriminating well you know you. that's why we're yeah. working to just end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp if you'd like to come down to our office on the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act uh, it's at 5220 Northeast Sandy Boulevard right above Stanley Printers at 52nd and Sandy Boulevard that's 5220 Northeast Sandy Boulevard. Or you can go to our website, which is CannabisTaxAct.org. It's our OCTA 2010 is another one that will bounce you to CannabisTaxAct.org. And we have a portal to all our websites at HIP.org. We have a whole wealth of information and tons of videos and an archive going back 20 years, all available through Hemp.org. Uh, one more question. Do you think that I would be able to get a medical marijuana card for uh, severe acid reflux? Yes. Causes nausea and pain, doesn't it? It does. Those and, are you two know, I'm conditions that qualify. As long as you've seen a doctor and have a diagnosis of severe acid reflux with nausea and pain, you won't have any problem getting a medical marijuana permit. Yeah, my uh, doctor's got me taking Prilosec for the rest of my life on a daily basis, and uh, I haven't really read up on the uh, side effects of that drug. But uh, well, I you might ask him if he'd, uh, you know, maybe get some studies about the use of cannabis for uh, nausea and pain and gastrointestinal ailments, and take them to your doctor and see if <coughs> they'll sign for you. And if your doctor won't, or you don't want to ask your doctor for any reason, we have doctors here in the Portland area and all across the United States. They can help you. Just, you know, call us at, that's the toll-free number if you're outside the Portland area, 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. Uh, or if you are in Portland, call us at 503-235-4606, and we'll be happy to help you. We have dozens of doctors ready to help qualified patients get a state medical marijuana permit. All right, guys. Well, have a good night. I appreciate you talking you to me. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for your question. Bye -bye. Good, good luck in your job search, man. It's a tough market right now. I, was, I haven't seen it this bad since I was, it's, you know, a teenager back in the Carter Reagan years, uh, back before, you know, 1980. That's why we need to create our own paradigm. Well, we're working on it. It's uh, we we've got. There's so many jobs out there just waiting, waiting for legalization to create. Uh, and that's what we're working on. You know, we have a series. If you're here in Portland, it's crazy. Go to the Starry Night website. You can buy tickets right now for a concert coming up on Saturday, April 24th, with John Trudell, a benefit concert for the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. Again, just go to the website Starry Night, or you can go to Tickets West or any Tickets West outlet. That includes all the Safeways in town and what other stores or other stores as well. Uh, all the Red Lion Inn hotels, they sell for Tickets West, too. So you can go in there and buy tickets. I, I remember you can actually buy them 24-7 at the Ace Hotel right here in downtown Portland over by uh, the uh, fish restaurants there, Jake's Crawfish House or whatever that is. Anyway, you know, we are winding up just with three short minutes to go. I want to remind everyone out there that, uh, you know, we are working to end adult marijuana prohibition through our Cannabis Tax Act petition. We have a series of these concerts all across the state to that end, and so we're working to put that on the ballot this year. We have till July 2nd to gather about 100,000 valid working registered voter signatures so we can use your help on that. So call us at that same number, 503-235-4606. Come down to our office and get involved. 
It's time to end the legal lies about marijuana and time to legalize and restore hemp. Yeah. So I want to thank you for watching. Tune in next week. And here's Mr. Tim Pate.